Michigan. The following program is brought to you by The Collector's Cave. Visit www.thecollectorscave.com for all your Chicago sports memorabilia needs and keep on the lookout for their future autograph signings and public meet and greets. Again, visit www.thecollectorscave.com for all your Chicago sports memorabilia needs. And if you're in the area today from 930 to 1130, at 3434 South Halstead Street in Chicago, Illinois, right down the street from Comiskey Park. That's right. We still call it Comiskey. Uh, Paul Canerco is in the house at Buffalo Wings and Rings, 3434 South Halstead, Halstead Street. So come on by and meet a Chicago White Sox legend. Let's start the kit. We are live here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. We have a lot of White Sox fans in line right now as we speak, getting ready to meet Paul Canerco. This is Paulie, Brett. Paulie, 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 Paulie. He's already in the house, hiding in the in the underbelly of Buffalo Wings and Rings. And we are Braggs in the stands. I am your host, and these are my my good friends and co-hosts, Johnny B and Trey What's Tunes. Up? What's up? Back at it here. We were here a couple months ago for Dustin Hermanston and Jose Contreras, and that was a lot of fun. A big turnout here today. Uh, double header at Comiskey for the White Sox and the Twins as they are embarking on their second half journey fighting for a division title, fighting for a pennant race, trying to, you know, get back to those 2005 vibes. And what better to bring the vibes than with Paul Canerco? I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that, right? That's right. One thing I noticed about the 2005 team that maybe this team could do is we just need a little bit more juice, you know, yeah. just like I feel like the players in 2005, <laughs> whether it was pitching staff, whether it was the hitters, the fielding, it just like even like little plays, little things, there was some juice. I just feel like this year's team, we just need to get that juice going a little bit. We had a little bit before the end of the, you know, right before the all-star break, taking three or four from the twins. Absolutely. We got to get that passion out there. We got to get this party going. No, get... I, I completely agree. I've actually got my juice already this morning. This is the breakfast club, but I'm already drinking my crown. Am I a degenerate for already taking drinks of crown? I mean, I don't know. Five well, o'clock somewhere. I mean, somebody's <laughs> somebody's drinking in Europe right now. I mean, you know, Australia. Maybe so, not as hard as me, but yeah, I'm sure I mean, you never know. It's but, all good. No, I completely agree. You know, this White Sox team came into this season with a lot of expectations. And, you know, the first half of the season, they may have been one of the more frustrating teams to watch if you're a fan of that team. You know, they had their ups and downs. They finished the first half of the season on a winning streak. Now they come out of the second half with a loss last night, 8-2 to two to the Twins. Not how you want to start the second half. Lucas Giolito getting beaten up a little bit. But at the same time, the division is still well within their reach. So you have to wonder, at what point do the law of averages kick in for the White Sox? Because they've kind of had a, you know, anything that can go wrong will go wrong kind of feel. And it has kind of taken the juice and the life out of this team and the fan base in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, last year they were such an exciting team. The Field of Dreams game was one of the better regular season games of all time, in my opinion. And, you know, they're just trying to find that that same fire and energy that we felt last year. You know, baseball is a weird sport. Last year they were the hottest team for most of the season, and then they don't win in the playoffs. You never know. It's It's about how you finish and getting hot at the right time. You, as our resident White Sox fan here at Braggs in the Stands, how do you feel about their chances of turning that corner and finding that that fire and passion at the right time? Well, it's all about timing, as you said, and that's whether it's baseball or any sport for that matter. But we got to find that identity. It starts with pitching and defense. And that 2005 team, the championship team, obviously had both of those things. Yeah, uh, We've had a ton of injuries. And, you know, right when you think that the Sox have got it together, you know, they come out against the Guardians last night after the break, and then they lose 8-2 to two and kind of were never in it in the beginning. So well, it's a matter of getting people healthy, no, no, getting people going, 
and, you know, just getting some streaks, you know, winning two out of three, winning three out of four, you know, winning, you know, six out of eight. And they got to get that going, and they, they got a lot of games versus division and it, opponents. And it could start today. It's a doubleheader. Yeah, they lost yesterday, but they were on a winning streak. But if they win today, win both today, hell, let's win two, right? You know, they win two, and you get on another winning streak, and, and then that one loss is you go nine and one on a 10-game stretch, you'll take it. Trey tried to sneak away here. And I'm not, you ain't you ain't getting off that easy. Trey Tunes, get your mic. You say he's like I ain't got much to say, so don't throw it to me. I am throwing. I'm putting you on the spot. He's running on fumes. One of the busiest men in show business. He does karaoke nights. He does stand. He hosts stand up co comedy at different bars in the Chicago area. You know he's got another gig here at noon. He's got a gig tonight. It never ends for Trey Tunes. And he's exhausted. I really don't give a shit, to be honest with you. Part of my French. So, Trey, you know, how do you feel coming in? Besides tired, how do you feel about the White Sox and, and the way this season has gone for them and, and their opportunity to kind of wake wake up and, and play the way I think a lot of White Sox fans believe they can play? Right. The, the talent is there. They're obviously the more talented team in the, you know, the division. So. You just want to see them wake up and, you know, score some runs and support the pitching staff. So that's that's what you want to see. 100 percent. I mean, they need to hit the long ball, right? I mean, chicks, chicks dig the long ball, right? Yeah, I mean, chicks <laughs> always dig the long ball. We all know that. But it's like we're one of the lowest. I think the rates. guys would dig the long ball too at this point too. Well, I mean, you can only speak for yourself. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it goes. But like, we're I think we're pretty low in the whole MLB as far as most home runs hit. You know, we have power on the team. We got to start stringing some multi-homer games together. But the the bottom line is, is you got to catch the baseball and you got to throw strikes. Yeah, the fundamentals, uh, I mean, the fundamentals right? Of baseball. The fundamentals have been killing them this season. And and to me, that's on Tony Larusa. I know Sox fans. Or you want him to go out and catch a, the ball? I mean, I don't understand. Well, just to instill that discipline in them. Yeah, you can make a mistake. Everybody, in 162 game season, you're going to make mistakes. But don't let those mistakes compound on top of themselves. You got to set a precedent that, hey, this way we are playing isn't acceptable so that those players will stay on their toes a little more. You're always going to make mistakes. So, no, I'm not putting individual mistakes on Tony, but the cascading of them, the fielding errors, the the base running errors, you know, th that that at some point does fall on the manager. When does, when does that fall to the leader in the clubhouse as well as far well, as the team? Who is the leader in the mean, clubhouse? I mean, who is it? I mean. That's a big question. Is, is it Tim Anderson? I would vote is it Tim Abreu? Anderson. Would you? But, you know, at the same time, Abreu is the, the elder statesman of the, of the group. So that's an interesting question on who the leader of the clubhouse is. Because, you know, like when the Cubs won the World Series, for instance, across town, you knew who the leader was in David Ross. He, he really set the tone in that clubhouse. Who is the White Sox, David Ross, that's going to, you know, not be the, the, the manager in uniform as a player? You know, now David Ross is a manager, but at the time, he was their pseudo. Full circle. Exactly. It is full circle. Full so circle. who is that guy for the White Sox? That's a great question. Trey, I'm going to let you go get a drink. Miles is working behind the bar hard What's for up, Buffalo Miles? Wings and Rings. Let's, Let's give hear, Miles man. a hand. Although I'm upset at him because the last time I was here, he copped a feel on me. And what? this time I haven't gotten any action. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's a, it, it, I've already put our status on. Com uh, it's complicated on Facebook. So we'll see. He is hooking me up with the drinks, though. So I will play nice. They are some stiff crown and coke. So make sure you tip your bartender. Well, Miles is doing a great job. As, as hardest along working with, bartender in the business. And you got to love go. Buffalo Wings and Rings, you know, for hosting an event like this with the Collector's Cave. And that's who we're out here for here today. Uh, you know, they do a great job making an event like this, a, a public autograph meet and greet signing for fans fun. You know, it's, it's not just about coming and it's like the conveyor belt, get your autograph, get the hell out of the way. No, here they're going to make sure you have an experience, have a moment, take a picture with your favorite player, not just get the autograph, but have an opportunity to have some fun too. They do their, you know, make signings fun again is Aaron's kind of motto when it comes to this. And I appreciate that because there is a lot of autograph companies that, you know, it is the conveyor belt thing where you don't really feel right. like you're having an experience. Right. It's like, 
you know, definitely personalized. The little details make it here. And that's the difference with the collector cave brings is just the, the, the little details that other companies just like kind of overlook or just choose not to do. So I definitely agree with that. Now, Trey, you can you can go get a drink. You're welcome to step away. We have other people in the audience. The 108 crew is here. The infamous 108 crew. Uh, they're one. They're doing. They're doing some of the best content you possibly can here in the White Sox universe. And I always kind of appreciate how they put out their stuff. They're in the house today. We got other Sox fans that we met at Wrigley Field for Cubs Sox last year. That was Me a blast. and you, Johnny B, in the bleachers. We had one what? White Sox fan with. I uh, thought that was a home run derby. Was that actually a game? Yeah, it was a oh, home run right. derby. Tim Anderson hit a home run on the first at bat of our first pitch of the game and then they were off and running kicking the crap out of the chicago cubs me of course you know full disclosure am the the cubs fan here and you're the white Sox. yeah fan but here. you were a gracious host on that beatdown so i, I did i, I appreciate the invite and we had a good time and uh and i've grown soft in my age you know i used to be a much more hardcore cubs versus Sox rivalry but to me when the cubs finally slayed the dragon and won the world series I kind of put those rivalries down a bit, not completely, but a bit. Now, we did trade Eloy to the White Sox. Dylan Cease, one of the best pitchers in baseball, leading all of Major League Baseball in strikeouts. Tough to see that guy get away. Now he's dominating for the White Sox. So there will always be that rivalry in the thanks, Cubs. For Thanks, those, Cubs. yeah, exactly. Thanks for Cease you know, and we gave Eloy. you guys bullpen help last year. You know, we're trying to do everything we can. Let us help you, you know. I appreciate I mean, that. I don't know if I want to give you Wilson Contreras, but, you know, we've done enough at this point to kind of give you guys a little help. You know, a, a great savvy trades by Rick Hahn on Theo Epstein, which you don't always, you know, can say. Theo is a pretty savvy man, you know, uh, GM in his day. But uh, he certainly won the Dylan Cease Eloy trade with Jose Quintana going over to the north side and now it sounds like the white Sox are kind of you know circling around the idea of bringing jose quintana back so i find that interesting yeah i think he's on pittsburgh right now if i do believe that is correct and i have heard that a little bit circling around as well we'll see what happens as we get into the the trade deadline as it's quickly approaching in early august i believe the second if i'm correct is the trade trade deadline so we'll see what happens there's going to be a lot of buyers and sellers in mlb so we'll see what's going to happen with that yeah, it definitely will be interesting. You know, back to the TLR stuff. You know, you kind of shot back at me when I said it's on the manager to hold these guys accountable, and you push back a little bit that the players hold some responsibility in some of the ups and downs. Where do you stand on Tony La Russa? Because when I watched the first half of the White Sox season, and maybe it's a meatball take, but I just saw a team that needed Ozzy Guillen. Like, TLR has had his day, one of the greatest managers in baseball history, no question. Feels like he's a little past his prime, and maybe I'm being hypocritical in saying Ozzy is that cure all for the White Sox, being that he hasn't managed in a long time either. But at the same time, I understand his fire and passion for this organization, for this team, for these players. And I just felt like that's the shot in the arm that this team needs. You can't trade the White Sox players. Okay, and we're just getting an announcement from our guy Aaron at the Collector's Cave, who you'll see moving behind us, working hard. And uh, we're lining up for those of you that have the VIP package. Please go ahead and get in line here. Uh, Paul Canerco is getting ready to come up, and you can get your autograph and picture as people rush to the line. Rush this is to a, the line. This is a big this day is, today. This is a big, big crowd. VIPs line up along the window. About to get it started here. Paul Canerco in the house, World Series, and Sox legend. Exciting stuff, man. It really is. And I've seen all sorts of stuff like there, he's going to be signing today. Anything from your usual suspects, uh, baseballs, bats, jerseys, all that. I even saw some of the Captain America bobbleheads. Uh-oh. Those are pretty dope. So a lot of things going to be signed here. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of. A lot of stuff going on here today. Yeah, it's exciting as I share along our show because we're available on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch and Twitter. 
Uh, you know, there's a bunch of Facebook groups I'm a part of that I want to make sure that we share this to the masses. So all the fans that aren't here can experience, you know, get a little taste of what the experience is like here for the White Sox fans getting ready to meet Paul Canerco. He's going to be right behind us. We have this backdrop, this beautiful backdrop that's very tricky to put together. We saw the guys putting it together early today, and it was strugglesome to say the least. You know, I was expecting like something to happen, like the skies to open up or some kind of like <laughs> unlock the secrets of the universe. That's how tricky that thing was to uh, to, to put together. But uh, to answer your question earlier about Tony La Russa, I mean, you know, it's hard to say bad stuff about him when the players don't. It's like the players seem to like him. They seem to say good things about him. And you can say about Ozzy's energy, that kind of like, you know, high energy type guy, you know, he keeps it loose in the playhouse. Sure. I get all that. You definitely had that in 2005 when he managed. But the bottom line is you still have to catch the baseball. You still have to throw the baseball. You cannot give good teams in Major League Baseball extra outs. You got to have timely hitting. You, the base running, oh, my God, at times it's been like, you know, like Little League stuff. I mean, how can you blame all this on La Russa? These guys are professional athletes. They've been here They've been here for a while. I mean, you got to take some responsibility, and, and somebody, in my opinion, has to step up and take that team leader role. I mean, you want to fire La Russa and get a little juice from that? I mean, I guess you could. I mean, the guy does know. Uh, the X's and O's of, of baseball, if you will, but you got to take some responsibility for yourself. I mean, you're a professional athlete. You're getting paid millions of dollars to compete. 100%. If you can't motivate yourself, then I feel sorry for you. No, I, I completely agree. I just see it from the lens of, you know, you're not trading these players. I've heard some different thoughts on, who, hey, who could we trade to kind of bolster, you know, some of the minor league because there's not much in the minor leagues. As we just have an announcement, Paul Canerco is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, Paul coming up behind the magic curtain. World Series champion and Chicago sports legend. And here he is getting ready to get behind this backdrop as the movers and shakers of this entire event from the JSA Authentication Group and Buffalo Wings and Rings and uh, Collector's Cave get all their ducks in a row, as Johnny B would love to say. And of course, I have the uh, signed Paul Canerco number fourteen duck to go with my collection. I mean, you gotta you gotta be in on the duck races if you don't know what that is. It's pretty huge. That's huge. And as you see behind us, Paul Canerco getting ready to take a picture with a lucky fan and his lovely daughter. Uh, really cool stuff. And that's what this experience is about. As you see, just over my shoulder. It's not just the autograph. It's the experience. You get to come and take a picture with your family, with a legend of the team you root for. You get your autograph on your, you know, World Series memorabilia or your Canerco jerseys that you either own yourself or they supply with you right here. Uh, they, they've got other memorabilia available to buy. And then you get to hear two, two jackasses talk a little Chicago sports. I mean, it's definitely high-quality H2O. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. We got the kids here and everybody having fun. And there it is. I think that means he's saying, don't cuss, Greg. <laughs> I think that's what he's trying to tell you. He's I, right. I, he, you're right, Johnny he's, B. He's telling you don't cuss. It's a fraudulent slip, but I'll do my best to keep it PG for all the family event, family-friendly event that we have here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Excited to see Paul Canerco. In the house. I mean, tell me it doesn't look like he could step up to the plate today and hit one out hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, he has one of the greatest, you know, he's always been known for hitting the ball out of the ballpark, but he had one of the greatest fielding plays I've ever seen, flipping the ball through his legs, you know, for oh, the yeah, out. Yeah. That was a great, all-time great play there. So there it is. I mean, you get these legends and uh, that play the game every day, 162 games, great careers. You're going to have a highlight reel that you could talk about all day. What happened to Trey Toons? He disappeared. He, went, he disappeared. He might he, be uh, signing a couple autographs. Autographs over there. in the I back. Mean, he you is know, a very busy know. guy, as you say, in the entertainment industry. He, re he really is. He really is. You know, um, but like I said, we have the 108 crew here. We met them earlier, and I'm going to call him up to the podium 
do a little interview action here. Uh, keep the White Sox talk going. We're going to talk all things Chicago sports, but we'll stick to the Chicago White Sox as I do my best Gene Honda impression. Was that a good one? one yeah. I mean, if you had a, if you had maybe like a smoking device hanging outside your mouth, <laughs> it would have been a better Gene Honda. But yeah, I mean, it's kid friendly. So we don't talk about that stuff anymore, right? Number it's just vape. No, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. Like if it tastes like bubble gum, that's probably okay and not as addictive, but it definitely yes. is. So. It's dangerous <laughs> stuff. Stay away from that, kid. So your license and registration, name and name and what you and, do here and, and, for the audience, oh man. for the live viewing audience and the ones watching oh, from what, home. What do we do? We I'm uh, I'm my sack summer uh, from the 108. Uh, we had what's up, Vito? Uh, we had a. Uh, a video go viral in our section of a guy um, showing his displeasure to the wave. <laughs> and one of the other guys, he's won socks math a million times after uh, at, at Mr. Delicious Beef Loaf. Um, he's the one in the hot tub all the is. time, right? He's the one that does the hot tub videos when he wins socks math. Hot tub time uh, And his brother, uh, Cherizi, uh, we decided, hey, you know what? We just sit on your porch and talk White Sox baseball all the time anyway. So why not just put it online, write some blogs, do some stuff. So we started from the 108. Um, on the strength of that video, I, I just want to keep saying that because I know Loaf hates it when I say that the video is what got his eyes like Scrooge McDuck, you know, with the dollar sign. Sure. It's like, we can make money doing something like this. Um, we haven't made money yet, but we're getting there. Uh, no, we've been around for about seven years. We started a 108 tournament. Where we pit White Sox player uh, Twitter accounts next to each other. I really and, uh, enjoy that. Battle too. to the end. I mean, it's fun stuff, right? Yeah. It's cool to see the campaigns for each individual and yeah. in the videos they put out to try to get the vote, garner the votes. It turns into like you know, it's almost like political campaigning because you're 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 propping yourself yes. up, then you start knocking the person you're against. But right. It's all in good fun. More, and that it's really entertaining. A hundred percent. And that that is our thing, you know, like that's really brought us out to the masses. You know, well, last night, I guess on the uh, Apple broadcast, we didn't get to see it, but we were on that, too, because we've met Steven Nelson. He's come down. He's a one away guy. OK. And they had the Apple TV guys there last night. So we were all over that, which was fun. We tried to get him to come down into the section because you you have to experience it in the section to really know, like, you know, what, what the 108 about. What it's know? all about. And you the be there to know what it's all about. And for fans that don't know, I, of course, do from watching your guys' content. You guys do a great job. But Appreciate the 108 that. is behind the right field foul pole. Correct. So, so that's kind of yep. like what it's known for is it's a unique view the of the classic stadium. 108 view. Yeah. Sure. Yep. But behind the pole. A little it's, bit different. Sometimes you can't see the pitcher. Sometimes you can't see who's playing second base. He's like you know, but that's around. kind of the fun of it. You know, when you see a big yellow pole throwing a fastball 97 miles an hour, that's awesome. So you don't even have to, you don't even care. And much like through the rebuild, we didn't even really care because we were like, we don't know who that guy is anyway. And we can't <laughs> see him. Yeah. Johnny B is the resident White Sox fan here at Braxton Sense. I am admittedly a Cubs fan. Oh, Not man. a hater, though. Not a hater, though. So. Take Cubs it fan. easy. Take he has softened easy. up over the years. Loves Purdue it's, basketball. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I but don't know. But if I had, to, if I had to give you a little a little juice here okay. as the Cubs-Sox rivalry, one of the things I've always heard from Sox fans, you know, about Wrigley is how you can be sitting behind, you know, a beam and you can't see you can. the game. Yep. And I've heard that for years. Like, oh, you're standing, you can't even see the game at times. And then this 108 crew comes out and makes it, like famous for not seeing the game right. behind the right field pole. And I'm like, you stole our thing. Oh, that's yeah. You thing. know, that's us. You know, this little brother always taking the big brother's stuff. <laughs> well, you technically, know? the uh, old Comiskey Park, you did have those type of obstructed views as well. And you know the famous saying, if you got lemons, you got to make lemonade. That's true. You guys just didn't think of it. I and mean. that is the beauty <laughs> of the 108. Because like you said, it's, it's, so it's a unique view of the stadium. And they make it fun to where you want to be in that section, in section 108. So I really appreciate that. Uh, um, yeah. You know, for you as a Sox fan here today, seeing all these, you got a double header. But I also wanted to point out, you know, over our shoulder, of course, is Paul Canerico, yeah. White Sox legend, World Series champion. He's right back behind my head. Isn't that crazy? I mean, yeah. it's basically you could basically call him a guest on the show. Look at him; he's yeah. in the he's in the picture. 
Canerco. So we can. Hey. What are your Matt Pauly Canerco with the Chicago White Sox fan from that elusive World Series championship? in 2005 i mean i don't know if you know but i used to live out west i used to live in california for seven years so during the two during the 2000 during the 2005 series season he was i was in i was living in huntington beach california so at least that's guy, a really cool place of california yeah, i'll give you that it's fun and He's so work in the adult entertainment industry well <laughs> I've, I've, I've since retired you know <laughs> it's one of those things uh i said adult <laughs> My lord. So we were out there for that series and that and like got to see the ALCS. And just the one guy that all Angel fans were were mad at was AJ Pruszynski. But the one guy that everyone wanted was Paul Canerico. Paul. And to see Paul Canerico get to come back to the White Sox after that and then to see the the mythical unicorn um like contract that we never see on the South Side be sure. given to somebody that definitely deserved it. We we were spoiled with Frank Thomas. We were spoiled with Paul Canerico, and we were now spoiled with Jose Abreu. Like, there's just a tradition that goes through, and all those guys are grinders. Yeah, oh, I love the, this. This the thing belt, is awesome. There it is. The belt above the belt Greg. is I in the house. house. Perfect to have the logo right above Greg's this, head here. Yes. Perfect. Lo- I mean, hey, when hey. Dustin Hermanson was here a couple months ago and we yes. did a live show, I put the White Sox championship ring on. It on tri- his finger. It triggered a lot of fans. Wow. That, well, you know, yeah. You know, but. You know, it was cool to wear for a second. It was, those are fun to see, right? Yeah, definitely. I was in L.A. Uh, opening week in 2006, and one of the, I was outside, and a guy came up to me. He's like, you should see this before anybody else. And he was a scout for the Sox, and he had the World Series ring. So I got to see it before they gave it out over here. Oh, that's cool. And it was, yeah, it was really cool. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. And this was like pre-cell phone cameras and all sure, that stuff sure. so i, I uh, didn't get to take a picture of it or anything but probably like, the it was greatest cool starting staff in a single season ever i mean all respect to the atlanta braves who once won one world series right. with tom glavin john smoltz and um help me out here tom glavin and and maddox. greg maddox oh my god I'm, how do you, you forget forgot maddox, maddox because dude. i'm in denial that typical the coach Cubs traded fan. him typical because i'm in fan. denial that we traded him so <laughs> that's why i forgot him for the moment but yes, in a single season, the Chicago White Sox starting staff was second to none. I mean, it's wire to wire in 2005. Pretty, I mean, I think it was wire to wire, right? For yeah. the Sox in yes, 2005 yes. and 11 and one in the postseason. 11 and one in the postseason. I mean, you got to have some pitching to do that. Yeah. Thousand percent. I, I that was, I, and I think you realize now even more so, especially for Sox fans, how special that was because we can't get guys to stay healthy all season. Right. And here you had guys right. that just like. Like literally, played every out, played every pitch, everything in that postseason. You, you know, know, like it's just it's it's mythical. It's an again another unicorn that you get to see out there. You're just like this is nuts to see. You know, like I said a couple months ago, collectors gave had Dustin Hermanson and Jose Contreras here. Dustin was gracious enough to come on for a few minutes, and we talked to him because at the time those socks were still struggling. Yep, as they kind of still did they, all the they, way. They still the are. I don't know if you saw the game yeah, last night. I, I did. did. You know, it felt like they were gaining oh. a little momentum pre. Right yep. at the end of the Greg, first half. Greg, it got so but, bad after that second or third inning, I had to put the game on the smaller TV of the sports book. I don't. Hey, I, I just had to get it you off. You could I tell the writing I, was on the I wall last I night. I couldn't. It was a Lucas re- Giolito just didn't have yeah, it. It just wasn't you know? there. But no. But what I was today is a new was, day. What I was going to say, though, was, you know, Dustin Herman said, we were like, what's going to wake this team up? Like, do they need to get in you know, a bench clearing brawl to get, fire that, you know, get that spark? And, you know, he brought up the camaraderie that the 2005 team yep. had. They were like, we all went out together. We were, we all played for each other because we were friends. As its last call for photos, for those of you that have a photo designation with Pauly Canerco, uh, make sure call. you get on up here Let's... and get your photo. Last call. Line for up on the windows. If you have that. With the photo, line up to the window. You're welcome to take it now. And if you right, want no, to come no, no. back. You, I got it. No, I'm just talking to the boss, you know, make yeah, sure we're doing what man. we're supposed to be doing over here. Yeah. You know? So what I was my wife, ask- my wife got up early today because she loves Paul Canerico. Hey, I love it. And she said, you know, I want to go. I told her in the car yesterday, I go, hey, I got to go to this Paul Canerico sign tomorrow morning. I don't, I don't got to go. I have to go. That's and a- I, she's like, I want to go. 
Paul Canerco, I want to go. Nice. And I was like, she never says that for any other signing. There you go. Nice. So it's like, I'm like, oh, this is serious. And then she's like, can you sign my jersey? And I'm like, well, maybe. Yeah. Hey, that's the loyalty and dedication for Chicago White Sox. Definitely here. number two on the list here today. You know, Paul Canerco, girls, and then husband. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're third. You got the bronze. I think what, I'm third. What, yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Sometimes you got to win the bronze. Oh, yes. oh okay. okay. Hey, uh, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know. I don't know. Man. I saw her face when you said Paul Canerco. <laughs> yeah. I have a four year old daughter as well, and it's a life changing thing. She's exactly like me. All I wanted in life was my last chance for photos. For once VIP again, photos, VIP last chance. photos, VIP photos, last chance. Your VIP photos. But what I was going to say was Canerco. when we had our four-year-old daughter, I was like, please just be like my wife. And unfortunately, she's exactly like me. Oh, that's So right. that's a scary proposition. But uh, you have a beautiful family there. Thank but what you. I was going to ask you was, yeah. you know, for this current White Sox team mm -hmm. has been a frustrating season so far. But not out of it by any means. No. See, right in the thick of a division race, pennant race, all those things, all those goals can still be accomplished. How do you feel about this team? What do you think needs to change this second half of the season? You know, what are some of your overall thoughts of the 2022 Chicago White Sox? So we, we recorded a podcast on Thursday. We drop our podcast Thursday. We record them live on YouTube like you guys here and then our stream yard through the YouTube. Uh, and we had Herb Lawrence from CGHO or CHGO Sports. Yeah. We had Ken WO. I don't know if you've heard yep, of that guy. No Ken WO. Yeah, he's a, he's a fun uh, follow. He's on a the fiery White Sox. guy. Yeah, from Bad Guy Radio. And then we had um, Celeste, Dr. Celeste Spaghetti, who's not really all that well known, but like is a very diehard White Sox fan. And she was awesome. But we were talking about this. And I think the consensus was is we're good enough to win the division because our division is so bad. Uh, so we're going to probably win the division. We're going to go into the playoffs, but depending on who we get in the first round of the playoffs, I don't know what's going to happen. It gives you a little leeway, doesn't it, to screw around in the first half. You still have an opportunity to wake up and right. play like the team that we saw win 90-plus games last year. There's, there's something to be said for losing some of the stuff right now and then getting into the one that's going to count. If we're three, we're, we were three games out, right? Or we're, we're three and a half yesterday, and now I think it's probably four and a half. But like we're still right there. You, you got a lot of baseball left, so it could happen. It's not even it's, August yet. No, but you, these guys got to get more on the same page. But I, I feel bad for Lucas because he had had four good starts before this one, so he kind of was due for a, a bummer. And I think this was a hard game to play, you know, because you were in a mo, you were like in like some momentum, and then it just stopped. I was you know? kind of a little bit sad, obviously, that the All-Star break hit when it did. Yeah. Because we, we finally got that momentum going. And I'm like, man, I wish we had, like, another week, right. you know, before the All-Star break to really – I think we could have really made some ground up. And then you get the break. You hope to stay hot. We'll see what happens today. Yeah. I don't know if we're going back to Minnesota. I'm sure we're going back there for another series. But what seemed to bring this team together was the uh, trip to the Mall of America as a team. All they right. were running around at Mall America, apparently. Like they, the Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Scene. So, like, I they guess. rollerblading through the maybe through Tony, the food court. Maybe Tony Roos is saying, hey, unlimited plays at the arcade if you guys win the game. Maybe that worked, yeah. you know. It used to be, hey, I'll take you to DQ, you know, but they got Tim Anderson's got that all locked up. That's what so it seems to be. It's any, like they're trying to find a way to come together. It sounded like Kenny Williams came in and had a, t player, a team meeting, kind of trying to light a fire under these guys. You know, I asked Johnny B the question, what are your thoughts on TLR, Tony La Russa? Do you I think mean, he's the guy that can get the fire lit on this team, or would you prefer a change at the manager spot? I feel like your manager doesn't matter a lot until it matters, right? Like, until you get to the end, and then you're making some moves, and if you're a technical genius, which he was, at, you know, he might not have it, he might have it, like, until you get to the end, that's when your manager is going to play the rule. Like, maybe give you one, two games, you know. I think some of his mistakes have cost the Sox games. Um, but he's learning. He seems to always learn from what he's done. Sure. And kind of change. But I, I, I think these guys are professional athletes. They know what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be listening. They're supposed to be trying yeah, to adjust right. stuff. It's hard to motivate somebody that is clearly, like, one of your top, like, 1% of people that play baseball. You know, it's just so hard to, like, get to that point. So I don't know why, you know, it, it's hard to have a guy that's going to get under your belly, get in your belly and get you going, right. you know. And 
we've been looking at like numbers and stuff, and we've never had Robert hit a bunch of home runs. We never had Makata really hit them. The one guy that we really, really need to stay healthy and get going is Aloy. We got to get Aloy out there and just bang that heck out of that ball. Because yeah. Because that's what we're missing. When we were good it was, with him in the lineup, he was hitting 30 home runs. Yeah. You know, Andrew Vaughn needs to start hitting more home runs. Right. That's what they're there to do. So if those guys can get going, I think the offense is what's killing this team mostly. For the sure. Defense, the pitching has been fine. You have, you're getting a heck of a year out of uh, Johnny Cueto right now. Yep. You're going to get a heck of a year um, from Michael Kopech. I think Michael Kopech has outperformed what my expectations for him so far this year. Sure. And he's out there. I mean, he's still got some L's, and, you know, he hasn't had great games every time, but this is his first full year up. Yeah, but he battles, though, too. You yes. know? And before he had that little hamstring tweak or whatever he had, yeah. he was actually way above expectations. Maybe not quite what he was, but after he came back from that injury, but he battles every time. He and does. you can see that intensity, you know, like Cueto has the intensity, and he's a new pitcher. Yep. You can see it. And obviously, hopefully, Lance Lynn, we know he has intensity. Hopefully, he'll get it going. But we need to get some of that fire, not only from the pitching staff, but from the players itself. Right. Like, you know, you, you steal a base, you know, you pump the fist, you know, like something. Like, just juice it up. Let's yeah, and stay on the base if you go run uh, yeah. past it. Yeah, like, like nice. there's a lot of, like, goofy errors that that's not a manager's fault. And now, can a manager correct it? Sure. But we don't have a deep bench. So you can't bench somebody for a dumb, you know, dumb play because we don't have somebody to back him up. Because it's like almost for me, just on the outside looking in, it's like, what would Ozzy do, you know, yeah. in a lot of situations? And he's done such a great job on the post game shows for NBC Sports Chicago. It's almost been must see TV oh, yeah. because of his experience and his passion for this team and then the struggles. And he's a tell it like it is kind of guy. And every time I watch it, I'm like, Man, this guy needs to be out there in the dugout firing these guys. Is that a meatball take, or is there any credence to it? I think that there's uh, – I don't know. I love Ozzy. I think Ozzy was right for the time. I don't know if Ozzy's the right guy to get these guys going. I mean, he's already had run-ins with T.A. online. Yeah. You know, so, like, I don't – maybe he says stuff to, like, you know, get under them. I don't know. Uh, maybe he takes some heat off them. But I think Tony Russo does that, too. And that's what that's the sign I think of a good manager too. And, like take the heat off the players. People forgot all about the the White Sox struggles as soon as Ozzy Guillen challenged, you know, John Heyman to a boxing match for charity. <laughs> like and, and and I, I, think I thought that was a sign yeah. too of like just a great power move and knowing how to use the media to deflect from the team. And 100%. then the team goes out and starts winning. So like I don't know. Maybe he is the call. It's kind of a moot point because it's pretty much sure guaranteed that they're not reuniting. No. Ozzy has said he doesn't want to come back. Jerry Reinsdorf has said I'm not bringing him back when they open the managerial search. Right. So it's almost kind of a moot point to even have the discussion because it's pr likely to never happen. Right. It, it probably is not going to happen. But, and there's probably a good reason for it. We just don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you know, normally <laughs> people normally guys don't come out and say he is not going to be considered for this job. Normal people like that never happens. Who else did, did Jerry Reinsdorf say, Oh, you're not even in contention for this job? Sure, nobody, you know, like it, it's just like he wants to make sure it's out there. And I, and I like Ozzy, I like what he does when he's on, on the post game and saying stuff like that. And I think he provides a valuable, you know, voice in that. And I think he's very entertaining and just a, an all around likable guy. 100%. He's a, he's a great guy. And let's face it, I think for us as fans, it's probably better to have them in the studio just so we can have that content, you know, after the games, you know, yep. with Ozzy too. Yep. Oh, yeah. And he's, he's been great. And he is great. So um, we'll let you get back to your lovely family. What oh, sure. final predictions of what you feel like? I know that's putting you on the spot here, but where do you see this team going? Are they going to make the playoffs and have an opportunity to win a World Series? They're, they're definitely making the playoffs. I, I feel like that's happening. I feel like we're going to win the division. Uh, I think they'll get it together to win the division. As soon as we get in the playoffs, it's going to depend on the matchup. If we get a Yankees team, maybe. Uh, if we get if we get Houston or we get Toronto, I think it's going to be a really Tough rough matchup. go, man. It's well, going to hey, be really you know, rough. Look at the Atlanta Braves. I think they won like 86, 87 games yep. and won a World Series last year. And that was in a National League where uh, you had a couple teams win 110 games. Yeah. And, you know, you would have never picked the Atlanta Braves who won what, 86 to 110, right. you're 24 less games, then you make the playoffs and all of a sudden everything goes the other way and Atlanta Braves win the World Series. 
So that's why you play them, right? That's why you and play that's why baseball is so exciting because if you get hot right at the right moment, it doesn't even matter. And that's what, what those 2005 was. Paul Canerco led White Sox yep. did. So you know, as an outsider looking in, I'm I'm rooting for you guys. I want you guys to be happy because that means Chicago fans are happy. Yeah. And uh, you know, we need a little positivity with our Chicago sports teams. It's a tough time right it now is. across it the board. So why don't you tell the live viewing audience and the people watching from home where they can find you? from your personal stuff and in yeah. and, and your and your podcast. We're on, we're on all the social media platforms, even TikTok. Uh, we have the worst TikTok account in White Sox Twitter. So <laughs> nice. we're, we're nice. White Sox uh, TikTok. That's for the kids. Um, we're, we're, we're horrible. I'm old and I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> a lot of times I just, I'm not even pushing the record button at the right time. So don't, if you want to see us on TikTok, feel free. Uh, we're on YouTube. Everything from the 108, uh, from the 108.com. You go there. We got merch. We got all sorts of stuff. So it's uh, come through. Come check it out. If you don't like it, yeah, that's all right. And We're your, not everyone's coming. And your personal uh, Twitter account? Oh, I'm I'm my sock summer. So I'm at my sock summer. Uh, yeah, I've been around, man, since 2012. You know, okay. doing the Twitter thing. I'm I'm okay at Twitter, but not not great. Well, Johnny <laughs> B's our resident Sox fan, of course. Like I, I just said, followed all I'm you guys. Uh, so we went to I went to sweet. your guys' Twitters and I just followed everybody. So but you better follow me back we can or all, else I'm gonna have to mute. Absolutely you. well. And, oh, absolutely. and we can all agree that we're Bears fans at the end of the day. Definitely they, can agree that we're Bears fans and Bulls fans. And Bulls fans. I mean, my gosh. That's where we Bulls come fans, together sure. at the dinner table. <laughs> so thanks again for coming Thank on. Thank you. Thanks, guys. From the 108, we appreciate all the hard work they do. Yes. Um, yeah, hell yeah. We're doing our thing here. At Buffalo Wings and Rings, uh, Paul Canerco signing autographs, meeting the fans. Long line here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Collectors Cape putting on a great event today. Yeah, I mean, uh, got to get this uh, got going. A good vibe this morning. We got Paul Canerco in the house, the double header. Got to get two today. We got Cueto going out. Uh, hopefully the bats wake up. I'm going to go with my pick to click for game one, yeah, Andrew, pick to yeah, click. Andrew Vaughn. I'm going to go with Andrew Vaughn for my pick to click for game one. Um, and just got to start stringing some some W's together here. I think Trey's eating some wings over there. He's Trey. got something. Trey Toons, who's the, the MIA of our, of our uh, you know, the three musketeers here. He's up at the bar, bellied up at the bar. He's. Eating something delicious. I'm jealous. You know, yeah, I'm jealous too. You know, he's laughing at us right now from the bar. Miles hooking up Trey. You know, I see how it is, Trey. He's having. Look at him. He's just just laughing along, having a good. Hey, when you're ready, you come back up. And I'm gonna put you right on the spot as soon as you get up here. But Johnny B, that was that was a lot of fun interviewing the 108 guys. They've certainly made an impact on. The White Sox fandom, you know, uh, yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's a growing fan base. Well, you have to grow. Obviously, you got to start somewhere. Like you said, he's been doing it a while. But, you know, anytime you have something a little different, like you said, uh, in the 108, you got to kind of come down there and experience it. You're always going to have, you know, a little bit of a following. You got to build it, you know, brick, brick by brick, as you know. Yeah, brick by brick. You got to lay the foundation and then start stacking the bricks up. Then before you know it, you got a beautiful house. It's been a hot summer, so I've been building Trust those me, houses. I, I know. Yeah. You're a uh, tennis professional, you know, helping out the the youngins, trying to get up in the tennis system. You yourself know about, you know, playing at the highest level of your sport. That's you for know? sure. And I'm, the, I'm playing at the highest level of laying bricks. And we're both doing it in the heat. It's been a really hot summer. My wife was like, it hasn't been as hot as it was last year. I go, that sounds like someone that works inside. Uh, enjoy the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's been plenty hot. She's like, there hasn't been as many 90 degree days. I'm like, yes, there has. Well, June was like 90s every day. Every day. That's yeah. what I was like, and, where have you and, been? And when you're on the court, you know, if it's a 95 degree day on the court, it's 110 plus as I reach on over, the court. Uh, so it, air temp 95, court temp 110 and above. So. It's like basically like a cooking stone. Yeah, absolutely. As I reach over you for my crown and coke, you know, I see Trey over there. It's the Breakfast Club, as we're calling it today. Double header for the Chicago White Sox coming up against the Twins. First one at like first game, 1130, and second game at like 630. So, uh, you know, yes, the White Sox lost yesterday, but a chance for them to take two in one day, and that's always a good shot in the arm for a team trying to 
chase the division championship. Yeah, for sure. And there's a lot of people obviously here at the signing. I'm sure a lot of them are going to head out to the ballpark, you know, get their, uh, you know, beef sandwiches and their beggars yeah. pizza yeah. and everything like that. And, and hopefully they can put on a good show today. Is there any rain in the rest of the day forecast? Cause we had a tough thunderstorm to start the morning. I'm not sure. I didn't check my phone as far as any rain forecast for the rest of the day. Uh, was there any concern for that? I don't know. You know, it said looks there, a little overcast out there right now. It but. said there was a chance of rain, but you know, obviously a rain this morning. So I don't know if it was for then or for now. We has a our, our forty percent chance. Forty percent chance for the day. So you just never know. You know, That's one li- could blow li- over and blow live through. Live weather update on Bragg's in the stand. Live weather that updates all day long. I mean, where's our guy with the championship belt that we met? In the in the bleachers last year, he's, I know he's somewhere. He's somewhere in here. We were we were talking about bringing him on at some point. He's probably in the bathroom, is what it is. He, you think so? Yeah, you, know, you know, it's a lot. You know, you just never know. You gotta, you know, well, you know. One of the great stories that I have from the uh, 2005 run is the pretty much the entire series of versus the uh, Angels. I was in the great city of Las Vegas. Oh, there you go. So. Obviously, with the Sox winning those games, I made a, a good little bit of scratch. I won't say how much for tax purposes, <laughs> but there was so many fans out there in Vegas from California that were talking so much trash, and just to like rub it in their face every night at the sports book was an amazing feeling. Yeah, I had people coming out there. I was playing some poker tournaments, so my sister came out, who's a you know a big Sox fan, and some other friends that came out for a couple days. I think I was there for like eight days in a row playing, you know, playing the poker tournaments. But it was really fun to have that excitement, getting closer to, you know, clinching a berth to the World Series, beating those angels, rubbing it in those California <laughs> fans, and then obviously making the money. Which yeah, is what absolutely. I love to do. As we've got some live viewing audience tuning in here today, not, not, not just in, in Buffalo Wings and Rings, but some of those that are watching from home on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Twitch, all your social media channels. Michael Hayes, who's a part of the Collector's Cave, is in Kentucky, and I know Aaron is so happy for him uh, being able to have a nice vacation. You know, I'm sure he's, he's not going to get kicked out of the family or anything. <laughs> he's having a good time. He went and saw Kane Brown last night, from what I saw on Facebook, so... He's having a good time. We wish you were here, Mike, but uh, we're having some fun here ourselves. You know, uh, Johnny B, you mentioned being in Vegas for when the White Sox were on their World Series run. Uh, You're obviously known for your gambling expertise. We do on our show, the Johnny B for three, which we'll get into a little later because we want to talk some football. Bears training camp coming up. You're obviously a diehard uh, Kansas City Chiefs fan for those of you that watch our show, but you're also very in tune with everything that's going across the going on across the NFL landscape. So we'll probably do a Johnny B for three segment. You were thinking about some things that maybe you could throw out there. And I know you could just go off the cuff because you've always got your eye on the different odds makers and their books and what's going on. So I'm, I'm looking forward to your prognostications with that. And I know the people that are listening will love to hear your gambling advice. So, You know, why don't we, you know, uh, segue over to football now that I brought it up. Like I said, training camp underway actually today. Rookies report to Hallis Hall for the Chicago Bears. Obviously, a lot of Chicago Bears fans here, you know, and and NFL across the board. Training camps open up this week. It's exciting time. Very exciting time. You know, football is is obviously king in a lot of ways for a lot of cities and um Chicago Bears got a long way to go. They're in a, they're at the ground up. You know, they do have Justin Fields, at a part of their foundation. So that's a good place to start. But a new head coach, a new GM, some new faces, you know, Bayless Jones, wide receiver, uh, some new secondary guys in Jaquan Brisker and Kyler Gordon at cornerback and safety. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of moving parts, you know, I know you're a Kansas City guy, but you're obviously your home and your your home base is here in the Chicagoland area in the region. You know, what are your thoughts in where the Bears are? They just let, you know, Matt Nagy go, who's back with the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid. 
where where do you where's your mindset with what the Bears are now capable of with this fresh start and new coaching staff? Well, obviously they had a lot of picks and they were moving around a lot of it in the draft to, to make sure they had guys coming in. And you just never know. You know, you got a lot of young players. They're hungry. You got a young team. And you got to get into training camp. You know, like you say, the dog days of summer, yep. it's hot. You got to grind it out. It's going to be a lot different for a lot of these guys than what they're used to for college. You know, you're being, you know, pay, paid to play a responsibility. And if you don't get it done, you're going to be gone. You know, it's just a matter of time. So a lot of moving parts. I'm excited to see what happens. You know, uh, get, obviously trading Kelly O'Mac. You know, and, and yep. things like that. So it's going to be a new no look. No Team Hicks, no right? Khalil Mack, no Allen Robinson. You know, there's there's rumors of Quinn going to be traded here, um, possibly too. So we'll see what happens with that. I've seen a lot of hype with that. But the bottom line for me for the Bears is is you got to keep Justin upright. Right. And what what's going to happen with that offensive line? You know, are we going to get that offensive line figured out? You know, is there going to be some continuity there? Yeah. You know, some hunger. You know. What's going to happen with that? And that's kind of where it is for me that's for the, the Bears. Point. Because if you can't score, you, you you know, you can only do so much with defense in the modern NFL. Yeah. I mean, they have two good running backs, but if their offensive line isn't cohesive, you're only going to get so far leaning on those guys to do all the work. I mean, David Montgomery having to, you know, you know, bash through, you know, so many different, you know, piles and defenders because the offensive line wasn't a cohesive unit. Yeah, he's going to make something out of nothing, but it would be nice to have open holes and spaces. You can get the most out of a guy like David Montgomery, and Khalil Herbert has a lot of burst as your backup to David Montgomery, but I completely agree. It all starts at the offensive line for any kind of idea of success for this team this season, and you know if, if they can get at least three out of the five guys right on the line, you know, you know, four out of five would be even better. Then you've got something working as we have our guy, Aaron. Okay. So as Aaron from the collector's cave is announcing regular autographs are ready. So go ahead and get in line in the back. If you have the regular autograph package for Paul Canerco, who's over our shoulder, signing away, doing his thing. So uh collector's cave, getting all the, getting all our ducks in a row, Johnny B. Uh, but, yeah, back to what I was saying for the Chicago Bears. You know, offensive line is key. Running the ball is going to be key for this team, helping take the pressure off Justin Fields, and then ultimately getting into the red zone and converting, not just getting three points, but trying to get sevens. Yeah, you got to you gotta move bodies, you know, on the offensive line. You got to move bodies, you know, the running game. You, got, you have the good running backs. But you need to move some bodies, and it has to be believable. If it's not believable, you know, you, you're not going to set yourself up for play action, and it's not going to work. So, I mean, obviously Justin is a great athlete, and he's, you know, had some remarkable highlight reel plays last year, and that's fantastic. But you need the consistency to run the offense, and you got to put points on the board. You don't want to squander opportunities, and it all starts in the trenches. I mean, it always has and it always will, whether it's in the offensive trenches when you're trying to score and the defensive trenches when you're trying to get pressure on the other quarterback so you can kind of make them do what they don't want to do and force mistakes and fumbles and turnovers and all that jazz. Yeah, absolutely. So long way to go for the Chicago Bears. Your Kansas City Chiefs obviously going through some changes, big changes this year. You know, um, they'd been to two Super Bowls. They won one. Tyreek Hill, one of the most dynamic players the NFL has ever seen. Certainly the Kansas City Chiefs have ever seen. Now he moves on to the Miami Dolphins. You know, after that epic end to last year, the one of the greatest NFL games ever played between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs, something the Chicago Bears can aspire to, to, to get to that level, For sure. to have an ability to win a championship. You know, like I said, you are a diehard Chiefs fan, so I'd love to know your thoughts now with those changes and how you view – can this offense still be as dynamic as it was with Tyreek Hill? I think so. Uh, there seems to be a lot of confidence from not only Mahomes, uh, which, by the way, his uh, half-billion-dollar contract a couple of years ago is not looking so bad now when you're getting these numbers coming out for <laughs> Kyler yeah. Murray and Deshaun Watson, who we don't even know how much he's going to play yet. So, you know, it is a team-friendly deal, but 
Uh, Andy Reid, you know, the, uh, the Chiefs GM, Brett Veach, they're very confident with the guys we brought in. We brought in MVS from Green Bay. We brought in Juju Smith-Schuster. You always got Kelsey. Yep. Nicole Hardman had a great playoffs last year for the Chiefs. He's another burner. We drafted Sky Moore, um, who who could be a weapon. You know, he's no Tyree Kill. Nobody no. is. But, you know, the bottom line is, is, is we're trying to put teams together that can compete every year. We're not going to put all our eggs in one basket. Sure. We offered Tyreek a lot of money. He didn't. He wanted to be the highest receiver in the history of the world. Understandably. Right, you got your ring, and it's it's time to move on. I'm a huge Tyreek fan. I wish him well, except when he plays against us. But, you know, it's time to move on. Every NFL season's a new year. And I'm I'm excited for it. I'll be at the season ticket holder uh, preview uh, training camp day this Wednesday coming up in St. Awesome. St. Joe, Missouri. And I'm looking forward to going out there and seeing what the guys look like a little bit with the new pieces. Yeah, training camp is one of my favorite times of the year. I'll be there next Saturday at Hallis Hall for those of you that are going to be attending Bears training camp. I'm excited to see what the Bears look like. But you mentioned the system, you know, having trust in that the system will continue to churn out the offenses that you've seen even if some of the moving parts change and that's what the bears got to get to is and re not, really good offensive line we got too. right it's not just about the system or not just about the players it's the system you know the new england patriots have had so many different players over the last 20 25 years but they stayed consistent because of the system and i you know for me if the bears can find anything with this new coaching staff it's that you know i i'm trying to keep my expectations low for aspirations of win rec win win total you know record this year but at the same time what i really want to keep my expectations high for is a precedent set for the system right on both right. sides of the ball and i think that's important for the bears uh you know franchise is just getting something that you, you, you can kind of believe in and that is showing promise and that works. You know, there's been a lot of turnover with the coaching staff and obviously quarterback right. and stuff like that. So you hope you got the quarterback. You think you got the quarterback. Now get, get the guys in place, football guys, and a system that's showing progress, you know, so you can build it, whether it's, you know, not quite getting maybe what the wins you want this year, but building towards the future. Absolutely. Because, you know, the Bears and the Chiefs, meet up in that first preseason game, you know, but I want to meet up in the last season game. Yeah. You know? I mean, well, we'll see you there. I want to well, slow down there. Maybe, maybe one day when we grow up to be big and strong, we could meet the Kansas city chiefs in a super bowl. But Hey, with Justin Fields in as part of the foundation, I think there's hope that he can become a top tier quarterback in the NFC. And that's what you need. It's a quarterback driven league. Patrick Mahomes is showing that with his $500 million in his pocket. I don't know how it fits in his pocket, but that's how he, that's the kind of quarterback you need. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, the guy's been everything that we hope for, you know, a model citizen, you know, charity work, you know, it's almost like a situation where it's almost too perfect. Like pinch yeah. me, yeah. you know, but you're you welcome know. for that, by yeah. the way, because we, 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 we took a different quarterback instead of Mahomes, who I was mean, second on our board. And instead we had somebody else, first on our board, who I'm not going to hate on, but certainly yeah. disappointing that Mahomes isn't wearing the 15 in uh, navy and orange. Well, he might have wore the five. Five wasn't available. He might have oh. he might have took five if you guys drafted Dang. him. He took 15. Who, who didn't give up number five for the big, I think, big I think, superstar? Well, he was a rookie, so sure. like I think it was uh, your kicker, dude. Cairo Santos. <laughs> Santos was yeah, like, he was hey, up. He was Patrick. on the Chiefs. He's like, give me some 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 money. So I don't know what happened with that, but he decided on 15. Well, Patrick Mahomes' dad played for the Minnesota Twins, I believe, who play the double Chicago double. White Sox here today for a doubleheader. How do you like that? that well, was we're a... playing the Guardians today. You keep saying the Twins. Oh, it's not the Twins. No, we're playing the Guardians. The Twins before the Correct. before the half. They're playing Correct. the Guardians. I do keep yeah. saying the Twins. I, it's early. It's the Breakfast Club. I mean, it's is hard. this the earliest show you've ever done? It in is your by life? far the earliest show I've ever done. I normally get up at 7 a.m. to lay bricks, so you'd think I'd be locked in. But you know, Breakfast Club, you're gonna have a few drinks, and then yeah, you might have a you know slip of the mind and forget that it's the Guardians, not the Twins that the White Sox are playing. 
regardless, the White Sox need to get a couple wins today. You're right. One thing also on your uh, Justin Fields is is right now it's like in the NFC, the quarterback, like who's going to be the star quarterback of the NFC? I mean, the AFC is so jacked right now with, uh, you know, Russell Wilson moving. You got Justin Herbert, you know, obviously Mahomes, Josh Allen, you know, Joe Burrow. All the towns yeah. in the AFC. I mean, it's like. Every week. I mean, I think the AFC should Russ, have their own yeah, channel. Russell Wilson moves right. over from the right. Seahawks to the Broncos. That's right. Yeah. Hey. So you got Aaron Rodgers. He's a great, great quarterback. Now he's in the, your division. Right. Obviously, in the NFC, you got Aaron Rodgers, who's aging. You got Tom Brady, who's retired one day, then he's not, then he is, then he's not. So who's going to be that guy to step up and right. be the face it's of the It's there for the NFC. taking. It's there right. for the taking. And no real Justin that guy. Big time quarterbacks taken in this year's draft. Kenny Pickett for the Steelers again we'll in the see. AFC. Right. But a long shot to be a top tier quarterback. But you never know. First round, first round pick. But beyond that, no quarterbacks, you know, being drafted in the NFC that are of note that are gonna take that spot. So it's just the ones that are the mainstays, you know, in the Bears division. You have Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff. You know, and, and Justin Fields is standing right there. And, and in my opinion, has all the ability and the mental, the mindset to take that spot. But it's more than just the quarterback to be successful in the NFL. So they've got to get that offensive line right. You know, at some moving parts at, at the receiving core. Darnell Mooney. Yeah, that's, certainly that's, who, that's who I'm looking forward Byron to seeing. Byron Pringle for the Bears. comes from the Kansas City Chiefs to the Bears. Obviously not your number one or two wide receiver, but a wide receiver that showed a lot of promise. No, he 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 had a really good year for us last year. He's uh, not afraid to make the te- the tough catches in traffic, hold on to the ball. I was definitely sad to see him go. Happy for you He's guys. He's got some shake and bake to him. No doubt, no doubt. He can do some kickoff, uh, you know, kickoff stuff and punt stuff too for you guys. I don't know who you're gonna have doing that, but uh, I, I was definitely sad to see him go. Happy to get an opportunity, maybe to get a little bit more action to sure. see what he really can do in Chicago. So then you have Bayless Jones, who they drafted from the University of Tennessee, who's kind of that Debo Samuel type player. Obviously, you know we can only aspire to be of gr- as great as he's been well, in the I mean, National Football League. Somebody's got to be the next somebody, right? Right. I mean, right. Why well, not, that's why the not mold him? that they want to compare him to. They just brought in Nikhil Harry on a trade from the New England Patriots, a former first-round pick. You know, had a lot of talent coming into the league, hasn't found that success quite yet. Maybe a change of scenery is what does him well. But I'm looking at that tight end spot because, like, with the Chiefs, again, Travis Kelsey, that's a great safety valve for Patrick Mahomes. Not just a safety valve, but a weapon, a bona fide weapon. And here in Chicago, we have Cole Komet, who we drafted in the second round from the University of Notre Dame. And he just hasn't lived up to the billing yet. You know, yes, you can put a lot of stuff on Matt Nagy. You know, you can blame everything on Matt Nagy, which I do. But (laughs) at the same time, Cole Komet has some accountability to this. He's in year three of being with the Chicago Bears. It's It's, time to put up or shut. It's time. Yeah, it's time. Those flashes, you know, you know, at times, like you said, look good, but it's time. You know, you got to. You got a new new system coming in place, a fresh start for everybody. It's time to show it, or like you said, it, or it's time to move on. Right, and it's also time for our buddy Trey Tunes to stop ignoring us. I see what you're doing over there. I see what you're doing. Miles, you have to help us get Trey Tunes back on the show. He's, he's neglecting me, and I, I'm a very needy person, and I need my Trey. You know, you just you just gonna I, I, ignore I, I us. I don't whole, think he's coming, dude. I know he just, he comes here, he gets this all set up. We got all this nice equipment, but I want Trey's personality. I don't need none of this equipment. I need my Trey in my life, and he's just neglecting and ignoring me, and I'm very sad about it's that. It's okay, Greg. Thing. It'll be all right. He'll he'll I've come got over. You. He'll come over. I know I'm just second fiddle. To your crush, <laughs> Trey Tunes. My man crush with yeah. Trey. But I think what you're going to see in this NFL season. This but no, season, Trey, can you get me a crown and Coke at least, you know, while I'm while I'm sitting over here, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm this one's getting empty. And I see what, <laughs> Miles is always going to hook me up. My, my guy, my partner in crime. He doesn't cop a feel with me today, but I'll be. 
I'll be I'll be searching for that later. A little hug with a little squeeze on the backside. That's what I'm asking for. You know, the little things. It's, that the, it's the little things in life. <laughs> the little details. <laughs> but getting back to that NFL, I think what you're going to see uh, in the NFL this season is early on, it's going to be a lot of craziness, a lot of unexpected things. Like teams that are trying to figure out their identity. You know, a lot of new moving parts like teams like the Bears uh, and a lot of other teams. And just trying to figure out, you know, what, what they're going to do as a team. And, you know, it might be even t tough to bet in the beginning of the season. And then as you get halfway into the season, a third of the way into the season. <laughs> Who is this guy? Who is this guy? It'll start Holy to sell. Crap. He made a cameo. That's that's the Kanye shirt, right? That's a sweet shirt. You know, hey, the pride of the south side of Chicago, right? But you don't have a mic, so nobody can hear what you're saying. <laughs> He has a mic. Yes. Testing. Tested. No, oh, hey. It's good to have you back, Trey. What did you eat here at Buffalo Wings and Rings? You know, somebody said in the chat that there's no Taco Bell here. That's right. There is no Taco Bell here, but there is some really good food here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. What'd you get, Trey? I had the I had some nachos. I had the the tater tots that were delicious. And Bre breakfast nachos. Nice. It, it was like a platter, like the Parmesan cheese fries, uh, the the nachos and the and the uh, tater tots platter. Sounds like a good hangover cure. I mean, I had some a few drinks last night, but I was mostly working. Oh yeah, you're the hardest working man in showbiz. You you and David Kaplan. Take that. Yeah, take that. <laughs> take that. We hey, so you know you didn't share the tater tots with yeah, us. Yeah, I, I meant to. Ah, I meant, did mean to, to. but then to. I looked at the plate and it was it. I'm like, oh my bad. Oh my god, they they disappeared. <laughs> it's like uh, Homer Simpson says, you know, he's like, hey, uh, Bart, you better get over here. Your your food's getting all cold and eaten. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. That is that's pretty much what happened. It's, it's good to have you back, Trey. I mean, what do you think of this event so far? Put on by the Collectors Cable. We were here a couple months ago, but obviously Paul Canerco being the superstar legend that he is yeah. certainly a lot of people here today right it is a great crowd here i mean it looks amazing just see all these people come together you know you know for this reason and you know the, the sea park the line is still to the, the door the line <laughs> right. is still to the door, to the door. it's right. never ending it's never ending with the white Sox game approaching in an hour, I think. Either they start at 11 or 11.30. Yeah, it's pretty early, I think. It is. It's an early game for the doubleheader, a makeup game here to start. So, uh, Collectors Cave, once again, doing a great job putting on a great event. You can have your autograph signed. 12.10. And, and then as soon as it's signed, you get it authenticated by the JSA Authentication Group. They do a great job. They have other memorabilia. Outside of just the Paul Canerco stuff that you can buy, you can get Thomas Jones stuff. I see Jim McMahon, Tony La Russa pictures. Dan, Dan Hampton. Dan Hampton. I mean, a lot because they do a lot of different signings throughout the year. So they have the extra, you know, some memorabilia that you can buy just while you're waiting in line. So there's just so much to offer when Collectors Cave man puts cave. on. A, yeah, fill up the man cave. You know, you get to a point if you're around Collectors Cave enough, you don't have enough room in yeah. your man cave for all the stuff it's they It's like, do I have to build a bigger room or house? We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> right? Exactly. You like that? Right. That's yeah. Good yeah, yeah no, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not doing framing. no, no framing today, but there yeah. is times where they have signings where there's a guy that literally frames your jersey right on the spot. I mean, there's not enough room for us in here, let alone the right. guy that does the framing. But, you know, it's a packed house here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. But that's just kind of the thing that Collector's Cave is all about, is making it an experience beyond just the autograph instead of just doing the conveyor belt style, get your autograph and get out of the way. You can have an opportunity to have a real fun experience and a moment with your favorite Chicago sports athlete. And today, being a Chicago sports legend, legend. 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 that's a whole nother level with right. Paul Canerco. Uh, just an all-time great. All-time great. That's so crazy. Some of the things that he's done, like, 
Like people only dream about, man. Some of the yeah. moments he's had is crazy. It's no, I mean, winning a World Series, I mean, that elusive World Series title for both sides of town in Chicago, right. to be able to bring that home in 2005, 11-1 in the postseason. You're immortalized at that point. Exactly. You win a championship in Chicago, you're immortalized. We've had good teams, and we that's like for Chicago, that's all we want is just a competitive team instead right. of some of the crappy teams we've had throughout the years. When you win a World Series, you don't ever have to buy a drink the rest of your no. life in this city. Drinks are free. Drinks are free, no doubt. Precisely. So, so Johnny B., you know, we were talking a little football. You know, we were kind of talking last night. Hey, we haven't done a Johnny B for three. It feels like forever. You're the gambling connoisseur. You know, there's a lot of people here sitting, listening, people watching in. You know, is there any chance you have anything dialed up for some betting props for the season? I don't have anything queued up for tabs to no, read. All right. I don't need but to you're read the anything. gift of yeah. gab. So, you know, Johnny, well, how about... You know, I don't know. If, talking to the Braggs. I don't know if we still have it, but we can we can pull it up. But where is the Johnny B for three intro? Where's the logo? I th- here, let me tr- let me see if it. Here it is. Here is our Johnny B for three intro with the all time great Mitch Holtis. Mitch Holtis, voice of the Chiefs here, and you're with Johnny B for three touchdown, Kansas City. Wow, how about yeah, that? Johnny, do it with me. Yeah, how about it? It with All me. right, so I'm going to get off three, the screen one. now, and you're going to give him the countdown, Johnny. All right, All right so I'm on. All right, this is for real now. That was the practice. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Belt it out on three. One, two, three. Touchdown! Hands hey, no, City! Woo! See all the at Arrowhead. Let's go. All right, Super Bowl thanks, 56 in Andy Reid's hometown of L.A. We're going. Let's go. I'm already- in the pro shop was a good experience. Uh, he calls some some games at Valpo, I guess, college basketball, and some of those too. Yeah, he um, does. And, with uh, David Kaplan, right? With Kaplan, and um, you know, my wife went to Valpo, so so there's a little connection there that there they is. talked about. So that yeah, was a great moment, and I'm looking forward to maybe seeing him on Wednesday at training camp. Sure. And uh, yeah, but uh, so there I was just, our Johnny B for three intro. So why don't you take it away? In the long-awaited Johnny B for three, for those of you looking for some gambling picks for the NFL football season, I strongly advise you to take the advice of Johnny B. He's made some big-time uh, bets and uh, brought in some dollars of his own, making some savvy bets in the NFL realm. Well, last year we did a little uh, show before, and I did some preseason picks on Braggs in the stands, and we went two out of three, 67% on those picks. Uh, one of them was uh, Leonard Floyd over sacks, which he easily got. He had a great year for the Rams. The other one was the Chiefs over wins. I don't remember what it was. It was probably 10 and a half, and they obviously hit that. I don't remember what the loss is, I guess. I guess I just put those losses out of my mind. But without further ado, let's go Johnny B for three preseason right here, right now. First picks of the 2022 NFL season as training camp gets ready to go off. All right. My number one pick is Mika Parsons on the uh, Cowboys sacks over, over 10.25 sacks. So 11 total sacks for the season. Get you the money. It's rolling off right now on DraftKings at minus 115. $115 bet will get you a hundred dollar profit. So that's Micah, my... Micah Parsons, a big time athlete. Correct. For the Dallas awesome. Cowboys. I believe he had 13 and a half last year as a rookie or 13. If my memory serves me correctly, going from my, my Rolodex in my brain, my informational archives. So uh, I'm liking that at plus 10, you know, get 11 sacks. It wins you the bet. That's my number one pick for the preseason. Johnny B for three. I'm just going to go right back to it. Some will call me a homer for my beliefs, but a lot of people think that the Chiefs aren't going to score. I think we're going to score. There's eight, 18 games in the NFL season now, or, uh, 18 Seven, weeks, 17, 17 games. Yeah. So you're getting an extra game as we did last year. Kansas City Chiefs over 10.5 victories. So 11 wins in 17 games. Get you the money. That's rolling off on DraftKings at minus 115 as well. And I know this has been kind of a, a popular pick with some of the guys that I talk about sports with and I talk about betting that you know do the research as well as I do so they're liking this one as well so that's my number two pick I'm going to go with a plus odds one for my third pick 
Um, Lamar Jackson looks like he's ready to get that contract and show that he's worth it after Kyler Murray signing. Sure. Uh, he was not healthy last year. You know, uh, hopefully his throwing has gotten a little bit better. Uh, the running, obviously, and the athleticism is without question. Second but this, none. this is uh, this is a plus bet. Uh, Ravens to win the AFC North division t uh, title in the AFC North, and that's rolling off at plus one sixty. So a uh, hundred dollar bet can get you a profit of a hundred and sixty dollars. And you know, that's just a little plus. Throw those in there, sprinkle them in there um, uh, for my picks. So. One, two, three, that's what I'm going with on a preseason, and I, I like all these bets. Johnny B for three. So, again, Micah Parsons at plus 10 and, what is 10, ten, and, a ten and a quarter. So 11 sacks or, or 10 and a half or 11 sacks because you can get a half sack in the NFL. At minus 115. And then the Chiefs at uh, plus 10 and a half wins. Again, minus 115 on that. Oh, that tough division and with Russell Wilson coming in and Devontae Ooh. Adams coming in. Huh? <laughs> Russell Wilson, the most sacked quarterback in the NFL? I'm well, pretty sure Cap. We've seen, we seen him win a little bit, too. I'm pretty man. sure Cap has a parlay with a few different champions. And if he wins, he, like, takes home, like, what is like, what did he say? He said it on the radio, like, $80 million or something. Well, and he has the Raiders as his pick for well, the Super Bowl champion. Well, let me just tell you guys this. So you're maybe we'll get there one day as Bear fans. But until you kill the king... You are not the king, and we have won the division. I can't even remember how many years in a row. It's a lot, even before Patrick Mahomes. He's lost count. Until you kill the king, you are not the king. So you got to do it first. All right. Well, you know, the king here is our guy wearing the crown, and that's Trey Toots. Notes is giving us crap in the chat. You know, he's saying, I was there a few months. Glad to see Trey finally getting a chance to speak. See how you villainize me, Trey? You walk away. You go get food, and now everyone thinks that I pushed you off when all I want is for you to be by our side. See what you do to me? I think You make me the I, bad guy. I think he's saying you didn't let him talk last time. No, he's saying it this time, too. <laughs> I'm always getting accused of this. So, Trey, your thoughts on how I'm a good person and misunderstood. Well, that won't take long. <laughs> no, no, no. Bragg's just great. You know, so <laughs> go, the, go the on. end. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm uh, like like Bragg said. I've I've been working a lot, and my brain isn't fully awake yet. And, and I'm physically moving, and I'm physically here, but my my mind is somewhere else, and I'm still trying to wake up. Yeah, and notes is he said I wrote that ten minutes ago when Trey was talking so oh. hey we're trying to get more tray more tray more better as everyone knows and you know which one i'm gonna pull up now i mean the people here can't here. see it I don't know what hey, it. and i'm sorry like I... <laughs> is more tray more content of tray more hey, as notes just said more tray let's practice hey i'm more than happy to go over to the bar you know, belly up and talk to my guy, Miles, take shots. But, yeah, Trey's going to get another drink now, Notes. So, you know, go ahead, Trey. You're more than welcome to. You You can come. Everybody can come and go as they please. But if you want anything, Johnny B, you want a water at least? I'm you know, good you're for not, right now. I'm good for right now. I, I, pre, alcohol I pre hydrated, so I'm he good. Pre hydrated. Got to stay hydrated. Who are you meeting? You got a buddy. At the bar, I saw you guys talking. I got extremely jealous. It was that Braggs guy is here. a jealous guy. It doesn't take much. Oh, he left. It was his birthday. Oh, okay. I saw him earlier, and I was like, who is Trey talking to? That's my friend. You know how I get. I get really jealous. But go ahead. Go ahead and get a drink. I appreciate you getting me this crown and Coke. Make sure you're tipping your bartenders, ladies and gentlemen, here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Give Miles a good tip. You know, he does a lot of good hard work here for the masses. That's right. We're going to cop a feel later. So, you know, as the Paul Canerco signing is moving along here for the collector's cave, the line is still extremely long. Everybody's looking forward to their autograph and moment. Paulie's signing away. You know, his hands got to be getting sore from all the autographs he's taken. You know, I mean, I, I can remember for the Dan Hampton signing, watching him sign the excess jerseys afterward and just writing his name over and over and over. 
Hall of Fame. You know, Dan, it's just like, man, you don't realize like how much work it takes. You know, it's a fun experience, but it is a lot of work. Well, in fairness to Dan Hampton, I mean, he did play defensive line in the era of football, and I'm sure his fingers were broken, yeah, like constantly. Yeah. So, yes. you know, he's probably like after a couple hours of signing, like, man, my hands are like in there, you know, yeah. hurting. So it's not easy. You know, Paulie's obviously a wizard with the bat. So I'm sure he's a wizard with the, the marker, the Sharpie as well. Uh, he'll get through it as we know he will. He's a gamer. Total he's gamer. He's a gamer, as they say. So, you know, hey, we're having fun here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Another live event. Johnny B, we've been doing live events here for a couple years now. Uh, Collector's Cave has another huge Signing coming up August 13th, a uh, Saturday in Maryville, Indiana. Uh, they're having Kevin Nash of WWE, NWO fame, big time, all time legend when it comes to wrestling. No doubt, no and that's doubt. what the Collector's Cave does. They bring in the legends, right? Yeah. I mean, you're not just getting like, obviously like baseball, football, you know, things like that. I mean, they're bringing in a wrestling legend. I know, and it's the same day the Bears play the Chiefs in the preseason, so we have a tough, tough decision to make that day. So uh, maybe Trey's going to be there, and uh, we'll have to meet up. We'll see how – yeah, we'll see. You're going to have to try if you want to be there to meet up. It's a Saturday, so we'll get it set. We'll we'll get our ducks Don't, in don't make them commit on the mic, on the film. Yeah, no committing. You know, hey, we do what we can here at Braggs and Stands. To try to entertain the masses, but we do have our, you know, jobs to adhere to as well. Well, I'll tell you what I want. I'm, you know, it's tough for me because to meet Kevin Nash is, you know, once in a lifetime type of opportunity. And that's kind of what Collector's Cave does. They give you one, once in a lifetime opportunities. Here's Paul Canerco, chance to meet Paulie before a doubleheader of a White Sox game. If I was a, you know, if it was me, I'm a diehard White Sox fan. I'm coming here. I thought, I thought you were you were changing. I am not changing. You did say I'm how not you like my shirt. But I'm just saying I would be coming here, getting my autograph, getting my picture, and I'd be going to two games today to see the Chicago White Sox take on the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, my God. I, I got it right. I thought you were going to say it wrong. No. I, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm locked in now. We're approaching – the 11 o'clock hour. Trey, you're not in the camera. And Notes is going to... I'm drinking too. Cheers, buddy. I'm drinking too. But Notes is going to bust me up. If I saw his hand come in <laughs> for the Trey for the is toast. here, Notes. So, you know, I got people watching at home that are going to get very upset if I don't include you. And I'm trying my best. He's fighting me, people. Also, uh... Hey, it's been a fun day. We're just doing our thing, having fun. That's what we do at Bragg's. That's all stands. you got to do. If you're not having fun, I mean, why are you even bothering, right? You got to right. have fun out there. Life is short. 100%. 100%. I mean, it seemed like yesterday that we won this World Series, and it was in 2005. And somebody just told me, like, yesterday is 2022, and it was, like, blowing my mind. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's crazy. We've got... Yeah. Well, a lot a lot of people don't know that I did tell my story about the series versus the Angels when I was in Las Vegas. But, <laughs> Braggs, did you know for the uh, World Series itself that I had the World Series parties at the mean streets of Aspen Trail? Really? Right. And I told this story when Dustin was on, but I had a guy from Serbia who's uh, a tennis player who's my best friend. And, uh, you know, Paulie hits the Grand Slam. It's raining. Everybody in my house is, like, running and and yelling and screaming and and drinks are being spilled on the carpet and Abby's like she doesn't like spills and there's drinks being spilled all over the carpet and then obviously um they tie it up after we have the lead and I was like, oh my god and my buddy says to me from Serbia he doesn't even know what baseball is he's just at the party because he's my friend and he says this guy's gonna hit a home run to win the game and I said who and he said Pasednik's gonna hit a home run to win the game I kid you not, and Pasednik hits the home run in the drizzle, in the cold drizzle, yep. to win the game. This guy never watched a baseball game in his life until he got to my house. 
straight off the, the plane from Serbia, and he said he just saw it in his eye that he was going to hit a homer. Maybe the greatest moment in White Sox history. I don't know, man. There's a there's a lot. There's a lot, but th that call, and obviously I thought the we're on the second floor of the uh, the mean streets of Aspen Trail. I thought the whole uh, floor was going to cave in to my neighbors underneath me. That's how many people were yelling and screaming and jumping. Yeah, it was a great moment uh, without question. And, you know, we'll live in White Sox infamy forever. And they built a statue for it. You know, it's it, it it's cool. You know, it's cool to see him here, you know, meeting all these fans, some of the younger generation that maybe didn't experience it. You know, trying to born yet. Some of right, them. to roll over and now meet him, have your own personal experience with him. Maybe they go back and watch the tape now. Because they've well, been you know, inspired I'll, by meeting him today. Right. Well, you know, I have a lot of kids that maybe went to a lot of games that summer that are, you know, obviously getting into young adult. And they're like, oh, my God, I remember that when I was a kid, you know, taking your glove to the game, you know, trying to snag a, a foul ball or whatever, you know, and, and here you are all these, you know, moments and years later. And then you get a chance to meet them, get something signed. It's it's uh, it's good stuff. And we got Big Dollar Dave in the chat. Asking if we're going to have Paul Canerco on, you know, he's a busy man. He's got a lot of people that he's committed to signing autographs, taking pictures. He's got probably a million more autographs after all this is over to sign. So we try not to bug the athletes while they're doing their thing. They're here for the people showing up, paying to see him and get their autographs. So last, we're not going to bug time anybody. It was a little different yeah. because we had two guys. So we had Contreras and Hermanson last yeah, Dustin, time. So it was like Dustin well, was you know, gracious enough. He you came know. on because it, his turn was over and then Contreras was signing. So there was some lag time there. So sure. That's a little bit of a different of a situation. Dustin was time. a nice guy too. Oh, you yeah. know, we got to get a little friendly with him. At, we went yeah. to the White Sox game afterwards. And then before you know it, we're, we're hanging, we're out, hanging out late here. at night yeah. at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Closing with, Wings with, and Rings down, baby. Yeah, we really did. Uh, Dustin and his lovely wife. No, you no, know. I don't know if that was his wife. Well, regardless, his lovely his lady friend. Lovely lady friend. There you go. You know, either way, you know, they, they were a lot of fun. And Jose was a great guy, too. You know, he looked like he could no. take the mound here today. No, I swear to God, it looked like he could have pitched that day. Yeah. I mean, he, he looked like a beast part of one of the greatest, like we were talking earlier with the 108 crew, you know, one of the greatest pitching staffs to ever have in a single season. I mean, and then in that playoffs, just gobbling up innings, complete games in a row by the pitching staff, like stuff that you're never going to see anymore with these, these pitch counts and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. I mean, definitely Iron Man type stuff for sure. Yeah. And there's Trey. There's Trey's thumb right here. Thumbs up for so Trey. Trey is a part of. He's got a show. He, what do you, you got? Something coming up here at noon, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you got? I'm going to be uh, at Woody's flat. Okay. And yeah. You, what are you doing over there? Uh, DJ and a brunch from twelve to six. Uh, you doing uh, you know the, the balloons and the and juggling. Oh no, I'm DJ. <laughs> <laughs> no, not to not today. Not today. <laughs> right. Well, it seems like you're always juggling something. Right. <laughs> you know, work, right, right, work. Right. I don't I'm even like, know what's happening right now. Right. <laughs> what, what is, what I'm saying, juggling right. work. What is happening right now? <laughs> well, he's not in camera, so it's hard. You know, all the people want to see you. Big Dollar Dave, notes, all these people. There he is. See, in the flesh. I'm not hiding. I feel like from the Mortal Kombat hey, guy. Look at this guy. Hey, this guy's Toasty. wearing a, a, a Purdue hat. Boiler up, sir. Boiler up. See, we got a Purdue Greg, fan. You found in the, house. the one Purdue fan. The here. one <laughs> Purdue fan in the house. The oh, here you want to say that again for the mic? Purdue is the Indiana University. You hear that? Uh, hear that? Indiana. Oh, right. oh we got a Are round gonna, of applause for that. Put that on a T-shirt or something. <laughs> you, hey, All right, yeah. hey. All right. Boiler All right. up They're, all day long. Hey, hey Bragg's in the stands. A big supporter of. Boiler basketball. So, you know, I appreciate that guy saying that. Throwing some heat at the IU Man. fans. Oh. Don't sleep on IU, though. They got the, – Indiana does have a, a good team coming back. Purdue, I think, is going to be slept on, but they'll still stay competitive in the Big Ten. Let's not get distracted. NFL training camp. I know. You're I know. looking way well, ahead. Well, you know, hey. Way ahead. We, 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 we cover it all. You know, That's Illinois good. basketball is going to be very good this year. I'm sure there's – 
a lot of Illinois fans in the house. So we cover it all at Braggs and Sands. We pride ourselves in that Chicago real taking, you know, really enjoying that take from that Purdue fan there. So that was a good one. You know, so the, hey. the sideways twisty laughy face. Yes, exactly. One of the one of the go to <laughs> one of the go to emojis. <laughs> What was that? The Mortal Kombat yeah, thing? The Mortal Kombat. Toasty. <laughs> what did he say when he comes in? Toasty? toasty? Yeah, yeah. I thought he said whoopty. No, toasty. It's been... Toasty. Toasty. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I mean, it's been so. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Trey's, you know, he's 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 like rookie. He's talking, but his mic isn't to, you know, he's saying these things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying anything worth hearing. So we got yeah. half a tray hat and his hand in the camera. Man, we're trying our hardest to get Trey to You know, he was a, like you said, he's a hard working man. He was up late working last I don't night. Care. He got here to help Sick set of up. This. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> what do we got here, Aaron? We got an announcement. Here. We're yeah, get over here. Get in the camera. Yeah, so we actually Trey say, doesn't want so to. So we actually Our say new, it correctly. He just took Trey's job. He Let's give doing a round of applause anyway. <laughs> for Aaron from the Collector's Cave. He Let's put hear, together you, this you, event. You. Let's hear so. it. Let's hear it. Yeah. There we so go. last call for autographs. If you haven't got your autograph yet, hop in line or come see me real quick. I know there's a few VIPs that missed their photos. So they're lined up right here. See the big boy right there? Put your hand up. Right there is where Our you're going to line from up. from the 108 crew. crew. Don't run away, Aaron. Run a, don't run away. I know you're a busy man, but, you know, we've been talking. Nobody wants so we've to been see speaking, me on this thing. We've been speaking your praises. You can even call out Mike, who's watching from Kentucky. He's not watching. He's on a boat. He's on a boat one day, you know. But, <laughs> hey, listen, what you guys do here at the Collector's Cave, putting on events and an experience for these fans, you know, just talk about what the inspiration was for you guys putting together this company to give these fans the kind of experience you guys Well, do. yeah, we're fans too, right? So this was about being a fan, seeing your heroes, seeing guys that you grew up watching and and uh, emulating, trying to do stuff in the backyard with the wiffle ball bat, right? Right. So that was the inspiration, and we appreciate that everybody that comes out and makes these events awesome. Brags, you guys, thanks, Johnny B, Trey, for coming out. It's always a good time. Thanks to the 108 guys for uh, helping sponsor this and obviously Wings and Rings. This was uh, one of our better events, I think, and it was packed in this place. Today. Packed. I mean, double header coming up. We you know, need we need to. We need to. <laughs> we need to. Yeah, two, absolutely. definitely two. You got more autograph signings coming up here very shortly. Yeah, we're uh, Kevin Nash next month uh, over August Maryville. 13th. Catch. Yeah, and then stay tuned because we're uh, we're working on some more 05 White Sox for you all oh, here. Oh my so. lord! Always, always bringing the best Chicago sports athletes. The Collectors Cave. Our guy, Aaron, Let's we really go. appreciate everything you do. Absolutely. And thank you for including us in Absolutely. your endeavors. We haven't gotten run out of this place yet. Not We've yet. done it a few times, <laughs> and nobody's, you know, bought us outside while we were loading it's up. It's still early in the day, buddy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still very Justin early. Justin just kind of, you know, gave me the look like, hey, he's going to pop me. But, you know, hey, rightfully so, you know. Yeah, hey, so appreciate That's Aaron. From the collector's cave. I wonder who's next. I mean, he yeah. said another 05 or coming up in negotiation. Yeah, I mean, they're stay always tuned. stay tuned because they're always an announcement away from another all time great that uh, you fans can experience and enjoy. Um, Trey, oh, you responded to my text. I didn't see that. I just checked my phone. It's good. We're good. <laughs> that was like an hour ago. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I didn't, you know, but I love it. I love it. You've seen all the fans here behind us over Trey's head is a Polly Canerco. No, you're good. I want you in the way. I want you in the oh, way. so nice. He wants you in the way. I do. No, no. We're here for Trey. You know, Polly Schmally. We're here for Trey. <laughs> Trey Day. <laughs> no, crazy. All, all kidding aside, it's cool to see one of the, the premier Chicago sports legends in the house, in our presence. You know, he hasn't hit us with a baseball bat yet. 
you know, or me, I guess, because you know, I can, I can be somewhat annoying. You know, I know. What that. is an acquired taste? Is that what they call it? <laughs> oh, right. yeah. you either love me or hate me, without question. But it's cool to see, uh, you know, all the kids here and the families and everybody taking this in. You know, so we're just rolling along, rolling along. We got the Johnny B for three out of the way. We've talked White Sox. We've talked Bears. We've gotten Trey on the show. You know, it's 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 just trying to put together, you know, I, when, when you're kind of shooting from the hip, it's easier from home. But when you're shooting from the hip here, you're just trying to make sure you cover all your bases, if I can give a baseball analogy. Did you did you do that on purpose? Did you say it? Like- I did. Wow. You know, did you think? Of, did you wait for the right moment no, all day to say that? Cuff. Yeah, that was yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, credit. he's just got it locked and loaded. It. He's, yeah, all bases covered. All <laughs> bases covered. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. No, I, 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 I can do things off the cuff. You know, it's not all scripted. It's impossible to be scripted. In a show like this, yeah, a live show. I mean, you can have ideas. It's obviously Uh-oh. hard to be totally Uh-oh. scripted. The one hundred and eight, the one hundred and eight crew is in line. We got our guy. Where is the guy with the belt? Yeah, where is he? Yeah, did he leave? Maybe he's tailgating. He's I tailgating. think he's tailgating, man. Yeah, he's on. peace out. He's gone. Well, we, we did he have gone. him. We did have him last uh, time. It Paul was fun. Carlson once said, "So, you know, hey, enjoying our time here at Buffalo Wings and Rings." They have a lot of great food here, a great sports experience, restaurant and bar where you can come watch the game right down the street from uh, Comiskey Park, as I still call it. I call I know it Comis- it's I call Comis- Field. No, I, I call it Comiskey. But Buffalo Wings That's and Rings sure. at 3434 South Halstead Street, Chicago, Illinois, right down the street from Comiskey. Make sure you guys, after a Sox game, come on up here. Before a Sox game, come on up here. Last time, you and I ate lunch and dinner and late night snacks here <laughs> with Dustin Hermanson. We covered num, it num, all. Num, yeah. num, 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 and num, it was all delicious. Yeah, everything too. that we got was good. I will say everything. Really you know. So wow, this, is, this what a, is a what, what a Kodak whoa, moment. This is a picture right here. Oh, Holy cow! This oh, magic oh, moment. Oh, it took wow, me by that is a, what you call a uh, put it in the living room type family. picture. A beautiful 108 family. You got to get Paul to sit in the 108 section. Yeah, will he sit in the 108 section? Will he? he, Shining through. Uh oh, Trace. He was singing last time, too. I was. What's wrong with me? He likes to sing it. Oh, we got our guys taking. Lovely pictures. Paul giving his time to the fans. We appreciate him doing that. Such a such a fun experience. I think he'd go two two for three today with the a walk. The line is finally coming to an end. There's still plenty of two memorabilia. Hours. Two, two hours, hours straight of, of a line. Nonstop lines. I mean, that's how popular this guy is. Paul, that popularity will never die. Paul Canerico is the Rolling Stones of the Chicago yes. White Sox. Without question. Go. Hey, we got a fist bump coming. Got a fist bump. Got some hey, fist you, bumps. Got a, you got some cute little daughters. Beautiful blue eyes. My wife wanted our kid to have blue eyes because I have blue eyes and I, I didn't come through in the clutch. That's your fault. Though. I know. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm a failure. We know. I it's tough, you know. Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Chwoopty or uh, or Toasty. toasty. <laughs> oh boy, you know, I, and you know, we've yeah, got. I might have to sneak in for a picture here, real quick. Yeah, go Hold sneak. On. I'm gonna sneak go out. sneak a leak for a picture. Where do you think you're going? No, I'm just <laughs> for the you legend. Leave the show. Yeah, <laughs> like me. Don't no. leave me with tra- tra- that. Means you got to slide know. in because. You're gonna leave me alone, you know, to to ramble along. You, you know, got Jer- this, Brags. Jeremy Porter. He wants to know: Can he get a signed Brags in the stands shirt? I, I mean, I guess if you really want one, Jeremy, <laughs> you're welcome. But it it isn't worth much. Did you get the? Did you get the? I'm picture? back, baby. Man, that was really that, that, wow, that was I like fast. to stay in my same spot. All right. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll go get a picture too. You're gonna hold this down with Trey. You what if get he a... comes in? 
I mean, I mean, you know, Greg secretly is a White Sox fan. He just thinks he's a Cubs fan. But you know, he did try on the World Series rings last time oh, we had cool, Contreras and uh, Hermanson. So he did try those rings on, and here he goes. Oh, wait, let me get out of the way so we can see. Look at that is Greg Braggs with Paul and Erico, everybody. On so he is officially a Sox fan now. So uh, the Cubs fans, I really am sorry to say he has changed over. <laughs> hey, all love here in the city of Chicago. You know, we have our rivalries. But at the same time, we can put those to the side to respect greatness when it is in your presence. Ooh, and Paul Canerco. I got, the, yeah. I got the chills when you said that. I got chills. The multiply. You know, Trey, you know that song? From That's Greece, from Greece. From Greece, though. I got chills. They're He's multiplying. Looking at us like we're crazy. And I'm losing control. Yeah, that, 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 uh, he doesn't know it's it. It's electrifying. It's electrifying. Well, regardless, you know, very cool to... You know, be able to take a picture. Yeah, Trey, go ahead. You know, I mean, what are you, what are you waiting for? Hurry up, Aaron. Will take I mean, this guy has got a he's jet set. Time is of the limousine essence. Limousine riding, jet set. Sure he's got <laughs> things to do. He's got probably more autographs to sign. So everybody's getting their last second pictures in and autographs, and we appreciate that. Just hand that to Aaron here. Aaron's gonna get hit. Hey, Aaron, our our buddy Trey's gonna slide in. If Our buddy possible. Trey's gonna slide in as I lead him. I'm pretty, pretty pumped to get my duck sign. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I got Hampton, I got uh, McMahon. Now I got Canerco. Um, I'm hoping when I'm ducks at training. Ducks line up. Ducks line up. Get some Chiefs sign ducks as well. Yeah, there's the ducks line up. Ducks, ducks line up. Ducks line up. I, I, we're in a drought right now, Greg. I mean, we did get the rain yeah, last we night. Are. But the, the, the creek at the mean streets of Aspen Trail is Dang. dry. It is. I can imagine. It's totally dry. I can dry. imagine that creek is dried up for you. You know, you always talked about, you know, for those that are watching at home that don't know, Johnny B is known, you know, internationally known for his duck races where he races these rubber ducks and uh, give, has cool giveaways and has a real fun, you know, way of announcing the races like sports, as they go sports casting meets horse racing right. meets indy 500 and, it, and you've done a great job for Jeez. years now i mean i think this is going on two years over, it's over two years over two april years. 1st was the two-year anniversary and uh it's a 266 lot of 266 races and he does it in a creek where we used to live where our townhomes were but yeah when there's no rain oh, this is the worst depend I've ever seen on, it. you got to depend on the rain to keep the creek flowing Right. He, you've talked about making a personal, you know, um, route. Yeah, you know? like a like a man-made route. Yeah, a, a, a lot of people are like, I, I thrown the Is idea that around. In the works? I don't know. It's I've kind of looked into it, but the the, the you know nothing beats the natural. You know, because the water's different. You get some rain. Take a moat. Yeah. in your backyard. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see as it evolves here. So let's give. Paul Canerco, a round of applause, Woo! everybody, for uh, coming out and taking time with the fans, taking pictures. Once again, Paul Canerco, World Series champion here at Buffalo Wings and Rings, presented by the Collector's Cave. So uh, it's just been a great show, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a great day. It's been a great event. Uh, Johnny B., any final thoughts as we get to wrap this up, as we uh, let Trey go on his way? He's got work to do and things to, you know, you know, things to do. And we're trying to make sure he can get there on time. Johnny B, any final thoughts? Well, I'll just say, like, obviously, we're getting into the home stretch of summer here with training camp starting. You know, the Sox are still in it. We got to get hot right now. I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Obviously, I'm super stoked about the NFL season, which is always my my number one pump and my number one betting opportunity. Looking forward to it. And remember, money won is far sweeter than money earned. All day long. Exactly. And we, we've gotten a request in the chat to get one more Pauly chant going. And if I could get some help from everyone here, still at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Pauly, 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 Pauly. There it is. Yes. World Series champion Paul Canerco. You got your wish, big dollar Dave. We gave you the Paul.
give the people what they want. The That's what, what we what do here want. at clap, clap, Bragg's clap, in the clap, stands. Clap. Um, Trey, any final thoughts? You were, you know, even though you didn't, you know, stay in front of the camera the whole time, you were an integral part of what we do at Bragg's in the stands. And I appreciate both of you from the bottom of my heart for everything you do to contribute to what we try to do and have fun here. Uh, so I thank you and you, Johnny. Uh, but any final thoughts from you, Trey, as you embark on the rest of your day with sleep deprivation upon you? <laughs> I have to just say uh, shout out to the Collector's Cave for putting this event together. I truly want to say these things are extraordinary, and you definitely have to make your way down here if you haven't before. Like, come to these events. These, you know, create memories. You know, these, like you, I, stuff like this doesn't happen every day. You definitely should treat yourself, treat take the yourself. time off, and make your way to a collector cave event. I mean, these are really nice and well put together, and it, it's definitely worth your, your time and money. It's it's great, especially with us here. I mean, I mean, seriously, <laughs> the food looks great. I mean, right. I'm eyeballing this as the waitress comes along. I'm starving. With those- Chicken. I'm, I'm literally. Hey, I think those mozzarella sticks were ours, ma'am. Yeah, I think they were. Close. I think you got the wrong I'm table. Saying, right. saying, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. No, we will be digging in here as we wrap this up. But uh, yeah, shout out to Buffalo Wings and Rings for once again hosting. A yeah, good, hosting a great event. Don't forget that about was Miles, Miles the screaming in the background. The year. Let's go, <laughs> Miles. Oh, let's boy, you better keep that same energy when I come over and cop a field, Miles. So. <laughs> you know, hey, we're, we're it's all love here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Uh, so we appreciate Miles working hard behind the bar. We appreciate Justin for uh, again hosting this Collectors Cave event, and of course Collectors Cave Aaron and Mike do such a great job. Keep on the lookout for more public Chicago White Sox autograph signings with some of your favorite Chicago White Sox legends. Uh, I know there's more to come in the works. Kevin Nash coming up. August 13th. Stay on the lookout for those updates. Let's, uh, let's get two today, Get your baby. tickets get at www.makesigningsfunagain.com or visit www.thecollectorscave.com or visit them on Facebook. They have a Twitter account. We also have a Twitter account. You know, follow us at, at Braggs in Stands or all our social channels, Braggs in the Stands. And then, uh, you know, Trey Tunes is on Twitter. Yeah. Follow him. JB side 13 follow Johnny B on Twitter and then of course you know I'm on Twitter talking all sorts of nonsense at G Braggs Jr. 23 so we're having fun another successful live show here for the collector's cave so again thank you to everyone Thanks, in the everybody. live Viewing audience, we appreciate your guys' patience time to with go us. get two white hey, socks let's go get two we white got socks. one golf clap we may have annoyed right, some of you. Hey, that's clap. so nice of you. Oh, thank, thank you guys thank for you. putting up with thank us. You. We do our best, and uh, we hope to be back sometime soon. So for Trey Tunes to my right, Johnny B to my left, I'm Greg Braggs Jr., and this is Braggs in the Stands. Uh, we will see you guys soon, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. And White Sox, take two for the love of God. Two, baby. Let's get it.